Here's how to make the most of your Blueprint student account. So you'll probably start here with your study plan, which is kind of your central agenda where everything kind of happens. First and foremost, I want to point you out to the chat feature at the bottom here, which will link you up with our student success team. If you have any questions about your student account, getting access to AAMC materials, if you need to add a tutor, any extensions, send them a quick message here. They'll be able to sort that out for you super, super quickly. So returning to your study plan, this is kind of like your week by week to-do list. Everything that you see pre-populated here was determined by the settings that you chose when you first set up your study plan. If you want to move things around, all you got to do is drag and drop, right? I would highly recommend if you can trying to take a rest day every week. So for example, this week, if I moved my AMC cars practice to the Thursday, well, now my Friday is now open. You can also see the total amount of time to complete all the tasks that are listed in a certain day. And I'd recommend averaging it out to about three hours, three to four hours max, no more for each day. Other than your full lengths, your full lengths will take a full day. So I see like I have four modules here. I might just move one module over. That way I have three and three. Three modules a day, very, very doable. The other thing here is that you don't want to move modules between lessons because certain modules are associated with lesson discussion. So for example, I would not try to move biological energy sources to lesson four because it's a, ultimately it's a lesson three activity. These are also color coded. Light blue, so like teal is biochemistry. Green, dark green is biology, orange, physics, blue is psych -soch. red is organic chemistry, and then the purple is gen chem. You'll also find that the lessons are all clickable. So if you click on it, you see all the modules that you need to complete, the homework associated in the optional practice. All of these modules and homework elements are already pre-populated into your study plan. I also want to point out that the modules listed for class discussion are in pre-work. So are the modules below it. So even though these modules are not for class discussions, you still need to do them. They're still testable on the MCAT. It just means that we're not really going over it in class, which means that you can afford to do these ones after class, right? You don't have to get them done before class. These ones definitely get them done before class for class discussion. And of course, you'll see the lesson handouts and usually any associated files that you need for the class in that file section. This is also where you join the class. So you'd see it says register here, but usually it says something like join. When it comes time to completing the actual modules, all you got to do is click on the module go to the assignment, and then you just start from there. An important thing to note is that once you finish your blueprint modules, they will be marked complete automatically. Whereas for AAMC content, if you click on it, you go to the assignment, it takes you to the official AAMC website. You should have received some login credentials in your email about three to five business days after you registered for the course. Once you get those credentials, you can go to the official prep hub, sign in with your username and password, and then do the practice from there. It does not automatically populate into your question counter. So you need to come back once once you're done and just mark it as complete, right? Once you mark it as complete, it'll be included in your total uh, question counter. You'll also notice if you hover over any of these days, you'll see a little plus sign pop up. Once you click it, you'll see add assignment comes up. The content modules and reasoning modules, all of these should be pre-populated into your schedule already, which means that you should see the sections are blank. That being said, if you ever reset your course at any point in time, let's say you've gone up to lesson four and you missed some modules from lesson one to three, and you reset your course to catch up with another class, in that case, the modules that you missed will be repopulated into this list here and not necessarily into your schedule. So if you've reset your course and you missed modules from before, you'll have to re-add them in from your content content modules list. They are not automatically added to your new study plan. Long story short, if you click through any of these little bullets here and you see modules that are still there, put them back into your schedule. It's all MCAT testable content. You need to know it for your exam. Ideally, they're already pre-populated into your schedule for you. Moving down, reasoning modules, same kind of thing. So this is more like the strategy and the approach. This should also be pre-populated into your schedule. If you reset your schedule and you see a couple of modules here, just feel free to pop them back in. In terms of full lengths, you should already have pre-populated like three blueprint full lengths and uh, four official AAMC full lengths. I would say if you have the flexibility, feel free to add one or two more in here. So let's say I wanted to slot in an extra full length right here. I come over full length, uh, let's say full length four. And yes, I want to do full length four. Just like that, full length four is now in my schedule. For the AAMC practice tab, again, you're only going to find things that haven't already been included in your study plan. Your study plan has the vast majority of content already. This stuff is really like that extra bit of practice. Let's say you finish the course, you have a couple of weeks to a month left before your final test date. You want to get some extra practice. This is a great place to go build that into your schedule. The next tab is the section exams, which is honestly the exact same thing as the blueprint full lengths. It's just they split it up into sections. So for example, FL1 chem phys section. 
I wouldn't recommend splitting them up into sections unless absolutely necessary. You know, the whole point of taking that full length is to build that mental endurance, build those problem solving skills. But if you're really pressed for time and for whatever reason you want to get in some practice section by section, this is a good place to go for it. Custom assignments, you can honestly do anything here. You can say, hey, read certain section of the textbook, teach Becky Erickson stages, whatever it may be. You just click create. You can put you know, anything that you want here. You can add a link if you find a really good YouTube video that you want to explain, I don't know, some certain concept, you can put the link here. And then you can put in the added times. Let's say, I don't know, this will take me 30 minutes. Schedule it, you can maybe add a little description entirely up to you and you can create. And then it's right there for you in your custom assignments. This is just a marker for you to put something in your schedule for something to get done. And then it's again, you have that satisfaction of clicking complete once it's done. Feels good to see the progress and you know you're getting things done step by step. So the next thing on this list is super important and I highly encourage you to create your own question banks. Once you finish looking over the material, you've seen it in the modules, it's really important to do active recall. So based on the modules that you've completed, so let's say here we've done motivation, attitude, learning, memory. I'm gonna go into my question bank practice sets. I'm gonna say science, okay? We're gonna do science practice, next. I'm gonna search, okay, psychology and sociology. I'm gonna click the little drop down menu and I can find, okay, well, what did I do? Motivation, learning, and memory. I'm testing what I just learned, right? And you'll see the little counter up here shows the amount of questions that are available. Go to next, you can choose passage or discrete based. I would say discrete mostly in the beginning. Try to do discrete questions simply just to say, okay, here was the content, I learned it, can I recall it? This is building your foundation. You wanna move on to passage questions once you've created you know, two or three discrete question sets pull out relevant information and connect both passage information with content knowledge. From there, same kind of idea, maybe start with the lowest low mediums just to get a sense of the content. You really want to start with that foundation first and then choose anywhere from like their discrete questions, 10 to 15 questions, whatever floats your boat. Time setting, I'll do it at regular time or even untimed. It's up to you. It doesn't really matter at this stage. You want to understand the content. You're not racing against the clock. And then, yeah, you can come up with a practice set. This is just so that when you go to the question bank section later, you have a name for it. So let's just call this learning memory you come up with a name for it so that when you go to the q bank section later you can actually review these questions you know what the quiz was about and then start so then now you start the actual quiz or you can save it for later and then do it at another time so kind of wrap that up i would highly recommend creating a question bank at the end of every day once you finish the modules you want that active recall early and spread it out as well right let's say if i created one quiz today maybe i'd create another quiz four or five days later active recall spaced repetition major key to the MCAT and learning in general. End of chapter exams are also an excellent resource. These correspond to the books. They're all 15 questions each. They're super quick, like 20 minutes long. And then really good test like practice. They give you some passages and give you some discretes. Now an important note to the end of chapter exams, I've realized they do not correspond to the lesson numbers. For example, by the end of lesson six, that doesn't mean that you have all the information to do biochemistry chapter six, end of chapter exam. I am crunching the numbers right now and trying to figure out a schedule of when you can add these in, like by the end of lesson one, which end of chapter exams can you do? Working on that document for you right now, we'll have that sent out to you soon. Excellent questions. I really want to make sure you get a chance to do them and do them at the right time. Then we have like supplemental PDFs. You don't really need to add this to your schedule. It's simply, we'll find them in the resources tab later, but one of them says, okay, well, which modules correspond to each chapter? This is part of the reason why the end of chapters don't line up with the lessons, but which modules line up with the book chapters? And then we, of course, we have that equation sheet, which is like our summary of saying, here's all the equations that you should know or be familiar with for the purposes of the MCAT. And if at any point, let's say you add something to your schedule that you're like, okay, it doesn't really belong in my schedule. All you got to do is go into it and delete it. And then the last tab here is the diagram diagnostic, which hopefully you've already taken. That's basically it. That's the study plan in a nutshell. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment down below, follow up by email, whatever works best for you. The other tab to note here is the syllabus. So this just kind of reorganizes everything that you need to get done for each lesson in a more, you know, user-friendly tab, right? So this is just to focus on what you need to do for the lessons. It doesn't give you a day-by-day -day breakdown. You'll see again, it looks very similar to that tab when we clicked on the lessons in the study plan. This is the stuff you need to get done for class. These are not optional modules. You need to get these modules done. They are MCAT testable, but we're not discussing them in class. So which ones do you prioritize to do before class? Get these ones done before class. Get these ones done after class when you have some more time. Get the homework questions done as good practice. Build in your QBank questions, maybe 10 or 15 for each of the modules that you complete. And then the flexible module discrete practices. This is just kind of like a pre-populated QBank question set for you. This is just to get you started 
but I would recommend creating a few more of these to really build your foundation. Doing one, I wouldn't say is enough. But you can see these are super quick. They're like 15 minutes long. You can easily do 15 minutes of practice every day and I promise it will pay off in the long run. You'll also note that in the top right corner, if you missed a certain live session, you can very quickly find another session here. You'll see all the upcoming lesson ones. And then we move over to the live section. Not a whole lot to talk about here, but the biggest thing is that you'll see upcoming office hours. Would highly recommend checking out office hours. You can see we have protein structure and function and signaling with Gabriel, cell cycle, division, development, all that stuff with Julia. This is a great environment to sit down with an instructor, ask lots of questions, deep dive into a specific topic and learn a little bit more, especially if the content is still a little bit shaky for you. You can also find all the past recordings in the past tab. So all office hours and all lectures. You can also search keywords. You can filter it by subject, by, you know, lesson or office hours. You can filter by an instructor, right? So if we look for the person with the most exotic name here, here are all the lessons and office hours taught by this beautiful person. We see social structures, amino acids, just hover over it and then you can play the video. You can also search by keywords, let's say isomers. And since it's already filtered by my name, you'll see the office hours I taught on isomers and chirality. I think around the 50 minute mark, I taught the class how to use a trick of like using your fingers to determine chirality. 10 out of 10 would recommend not to toot my own horn, maybe tooting my own horn just a little bit. But the point is there's a lot of good stuff in the recordings. Try to attend live when possible, but if you can't make it to the sessions for whatever reason, or you're trying to catch up and you're just trying to build it around your own schedule, the recordings are a great place to go as well. In terms of the exams, you'll find all of your diagnostic and blueprint full lengths live here. Again, you can see you can take the multiple times. These aren't different exams. It's just the same thing. It's just different attempts. Once you finish a section, you can click the, the review and it'll go through all the questions step by step for you. It's not a whole lot going on here. QBanks, you'll see the quizzes that you've created in the past, the same kind of idea. You can do them here. You can review them here. There's also multiple attempts, same kind of quiz. Realistically, I'd only recommend doing it once. There's no point in doing it multiple times. You get tons of new questions to work through as well. It's just a good place to go back and review the questions that you've completed because review is just as important as practice. Before you find a solution, you got to identify the problem. Speaking of identifying the problem, we have analytics. So ignore my 484 here. I swear I just went through and I clicked random things so I could get a data point here to show you. I promise promise I'm still qualified to teach the MCAT. But here you'll see your scaled scores over time. So the numbers will pop up. You see their color coded diagnostic AAMC blueprint full lengths. Your latest completed test will give you a breakdown by sections. Hopefully yours looks a little bit better than mine. Your AAMC exam scores will be listed here as well. In terms of aggregate analytics, it'll show you, you know, the, for the questions that you flagged, how many you got right, how many you got wrong. I really like these ones. It's very informative. If you have a high number of wrong to right, that probably means that taking that extra step to reconsider the question and look for the right answer gave you the right answer. Whereas if you see a high number of right to wrong, that's probably like you're overthinking. In those cases, the recommendation would be like, trust your gut a little bit more, right? Don't spend too long going back and analyzing every little detail. Then by topic and by subject, you'll see if you click on it, it gives you a breakdown of each of the module titles. If you see only one question, it's 100% wrong, it's kind of skewed. You could have just missed one question and like, obviously it's hundred percent wrong. But if you have 10 questions wrong in microbiology and 10 out of 10 are wrong, probably a little bit of a red flag. Maybe you want to revisit that module, read the text or go to the office hours for it. But this is a good way to identify content gaps. Moving on to the by relationship of the passage, we can see that we have discretes, pseudo discretes, requires passage only, requires both passage and outside. Students who see a high number of mistakes in discretes and pseudo discretes usually means it's a foundational content error because all you didn't need anything from the passage. You just needed to know it. Students who see a high number of errors in passage only or passage and outside information, that's usually an issue with strategy, right? Your figure analysis, maybe your understanding of experimental design, maybe pulling out tone words and cars, whatever it may be, there's something that's a gap in your approach to the passage itself. By difficulty, ideally you should be seeing that the lowest difficulties are pretty high up on the spectrum. Those are also the most high yield on the MCAT. And then we have by content category and by reasoning skills. These are the AAMC classifications. So we just kind of reclassify all the questions based on this as well. You can see percent correct, percent incorrect. Never have anything incomplete. Remember the MCAT does not penalize you for answering a question incorrectly when in doubt guess, right? And we'll teach you in the live courses how to do educated guessing, how to like narrow it down from four choices to two choices. And then it's a much better chance at a 50, 50 as opposed to one out of four. But same kind of thing, you can maybe identify certain areas like, hey, I'm really struggling with foundation of comprehension. Maybe reach out to your instructors and say like any tips or revisit the reasoning modules and see if there's anything that you can revamp there. 
almost at the end, we have flashcards. I would say it's very useful to try and do at least 15 flashcards a day. This goes with that active recall. This goes with that self quizzing. The point is once you see something, you try to understand it, but you don't retain it until you pull it back from memory several times. You build the neural connections when you really try to pull it from memory and then use it for a question. So my recommended flashcard settings, I would say, especially early on, stick to the study plan option. All this does is that all the modules you've completed to date, it incorporates into the flashcard deck for you. I would recommend doing a la carte later in your prep where you can switch over to say, hey, I'm really struggling with some of my psych social terms and I wanna focus on them. Go into your a la carte and then you can specifically select, okay, I wanna do psych social, I wanna do learning memory and etc. Date range, at least early on, I would say stick with all. Review style, do spaced repetition. We'll see what that means in a second. And then select side, I would say random is a good place to start. It'll either show you a term and then you wanna like close your eyes and say the definition. Then you click it, it flips and you can confirm. Or it gives you the definition and then you try to guess what the term is you click the slide and then it flips and then gives you the term so you check if it was right it's a daily goal honestly 15 is a good place to start we're not trying to overwhelm you right now it's also super quick right five ten minutes max so if we go to cards so cation what are we talking about here probably a positively charged ion yeah, positively charged ion, right? So something like this, it was super simple for me. So I can choose one of two things. Either I'm going to say my comfort level is really high, which means that it'll show me like a few weeks later, right? It's not gonna show me very soon. Or I can say, don't show this card at all. I'm gonna remove it from the deck because I'm like, I honestly feel 100% from this. Early on in your prep, I'd say stick to the highs unless absolutely sure you're like, I literally know this like the back of my hand and I don't need to review this, then get rid of it. Don't show this card again. If it's something more difficult, if it's a term that you didn't fully get or a term that you don't fully understand, put your comfort level as low. What that does is that it, it will show you the same card sooner. Probably a couple cards later in the next card deck, it's gonna show me this card again so that I can really spend time drilling myself on it. Whereas something with high, it'll show me, you know, like six decks later. And finally, we have the resources tab here. Really not too much new stuff. This is just one way to list out all the modules that are part of the course. I'd say two useful things to search here. If you have any keywords, let's say, oh, I'm struggling with, I don't know, Aldal chemistry. You search up a keyword and it'll try to populate up. You can see, oh, there's a relevant video, there's a relevant module. The other thing to do is that if you search science, this will give you all of the science reasoning modules. So how to approach experimental design, how to eliminate wrong answers, process of elimination, all that good stuff. Let's say you're later in the course, you just wanna revamp one of the strategies, you wanna rewatch one of these modules, great place to find it. Same thing with cars. If you just type in cars, it'll give you all the core reading cars, module strategies. Uh, you see all that good stuff listed here. PDFs, we've already mentioned earlier. There's really only a couple of files here. Just the learning module to book chapter alignment and the equation sheet. I'll just show you that real quick. So you'll see with the module to chapter alignment, you see that in the book, chapter two corresponds to eukaryotic cells, plasma membrane structure. These are all names of the uh, modules in your study plan. And finally, the equation sheet. These are all equations you should know or at least be familiar with for the purposes of the MCAT. And that's pretty much it. So if we return to this little blueprint logo, this is your daily dashboard. Here you'll see the number of questions you've completed, the number of modules you've completed, the full lengths you've completed, the classes you've attended, the upcoming office hours that could be useful for you, the assignments that you wanna do for each day. You can just click on them, go to assignment tomorrow's assignment, right? Looking ahead a little bit. And then of course your scaled scores, your progress over time. And then you have a nice little flashcard meter, right? Your daily goal. If you set it to 15, 15 a day, very doable. Do it once every day. Really, really good for active recall. All right. So that's pretty much it. That's literally everything you need to know about your student account. If you have any more questions, feel free to drop it down in the comments, follow up by email, whatever floats your boat and best of luck studying. I hope to see some of you in class, maybe in office hours and uh, reach out if there's anything I can help with. See you soon.